alumni and students have shared their accounts of paranormal experiences over the years, an informal tradition of sorts. It's a tradition that goes back generations, a practice of telling ghost stories, and it's a practice older than the name Chatham University. Chatham University was founded in 1869, and at the time it was founded, it was called the Pennsylvania Female College. That name lasted until about the 1890s when it was changed to the Pennsylvania College for Women, and then in uh, 2007, we received university status and became Chatham University. The first school building was Barry Hall. The building was purchased from George Barry who was a trustee, one of the earliest trustees of the school. At the time of its purchase, the home was considered the largest residence in the county. The college added Barry Hall to the original campus as part of an expansion project. The building served as a home for dorms, libraries, and even science labs. But in the middle of the 20th century, administrators ordered the demolition of the structure. They declared it too old, too outdated, too difficult to maintain. It was also the perfect setting for one of the first ghost stories on campus. Uh, we have in some of the early student handbooks uh, these little books that were given out to incoming students to teach them about student government and rules of campus, what time curfew is, and that sort of thing. And in starting in the late 40s, those uh, student handbooks included a few ghost stories. This 1948 to 49, this is the first where there's a ghost story included in the handbook. And this is talking about the ghost story uh, associated with Barry Hall. The first record of this ghost story actually is in the, was in the student newspaper in 1926. And they tell this, the, the story of, of the ghost of Barry Hall. But the story is that there was a babysitter holding a young child in the tower and there was a thunderstorm and um, she stood up and screamed and dropped the baby and it rolled down the steps and died. The ghost of Barry Hall may be one of the original folklore tales at Chatham, but there are other narratives of the supernatural. I did research one day because I had heard rumors that Chatham was haunted and I had seen it was like the most haunted universities in Pennsylvania and Chatham was like number 10. Um, so I did my own research and I found not a whole lot, but I found some stories that could be true, could not be true. I don't, I don't know. The woman in blue, also known as the blue lady, is one of Chatham's best known ghost stories. She reportedly wanders Woodland Hall where she's said to haunt undergrads. They say she will stand over you while you sleep at night. Well, in Woodland, for sure, we have the Blue Lady, and she basically, like, will hover over you and wake you up. The Blue Lady in uh, Woodland Hall, um, you can see her at night when you're walking in the hallways. I do have friends that live there that swear that they saw her many a times. One of the websites I looked at, there was an, um, a story about a girl that lived in Woodland, and the lady in the blue dress grabbed her foot in the middle of the night or something and tried to drag her off her bed. My friend Alexis, who lives next to me, said that she has, well, she told me about the blue lady. She said that, like, at night she would feel things, like, pulling on her, like, feet or blankets and stuff, which scares me. But I've never experienced that, but she has. The story of the woman in blue hovering over you in bed is just one of the many tales roaming this campus. I experience um, the little boy a lot in my room, specifically. I'll be either asleep or like going to sleep, or he'll wake me up. So I experience him a lot. For me, I get, like I'll know when he's here, like I'll feel his presence, or the other night he opened up my closet door just like to tell me he was here and then when I was sleeping 
And um, I like kind of woke up and I just felt something like grab my ankle. Living in Ficus, Ficus has at least two ghosts that I know of. Um, one is a maid who you can hear walking up and down the stairs and the other is a little boy. And that's one where maybe I heard him. Like I lived in like the newer part of Ficus and all of the hauntings would happen in the main house area. Um, but uh, the third floor to the second floor, you can hear like a ball like bouncing down the stairs and like a child's laughter and I knew girls who lived on that third floor I lived on the first floor and uh, my first year a girl ran down the stairs freaked out it was like 10 o'clock at night and she said that she heard this I lived in Ficus my freshman year so the first one I heard about was like a little boy living in Ficus um basically like he died in Ficus by chasing a ball out of a window. And then I was in the shower one night, it was like two in the morning, cause I was up studying. And it literally sounded like there was a ball bouncing like directly behind me. Like not like a few feet away, like right behind me. Um, well, definitely the very first one, which I experienced myself, um, is the first thing that I was told whenever I was coming on campus for an interview was to wave to Mr. Mellon in the Mellon Center. And we were told, make sure you say hi or else it's, you know, five years of bad luck. Many of the ghost stories are part of the shared lore of campus, just stories, Chatham legend. But some maintain they have experienced the paranormal firsthand they claim they have encountered the supernatural. My first experience was wall tapping and my door opening and closing, even when like my window like wasn't open or somebody wasn't closing their door across the hall or something, I would hear my door handle jiggle a lot. And then I lived next to my best friend, Alexis, and we would tap on the walls to each other, be like, okay, get up or something. And that girl would sleep all day, so I know she wasn't tapping on the wall and I would hear it sometimes and it spooked me. Well, there was one time, like the very first week of school, my roommate and I, we were laying in bed and her bed was right beside the, our door to our room, um, like an arm reach away. And we heard like a giant bang on our door, like not like a little knock, like really loud. And as soon as it happened, she opened the door and nobody was there. We're also like in the middle of the hallway. So like, it wasn't like anybody knocking and like running away. Um, she was the RA, she was on the third floor. It was kind of like a small room. I don't know if it has a window. It might have like one of those small windows. Mm -hmm. um, but she was in there hanging something up. Um, I don't know if it was lights or something. And she said that she saw something out of like the corner of her eye of this like dark figure. She said it was a really tall figure. It had like this kind of violent, feeling like she left the room she was in tears like upset like it just happened she called her boyfriend she like refused to go back into the room until he came over and like the next year she, she like did not sign up to live in the house like she was really freaked out with all the stories and personal accounts shared decade after decade some might claim chatham is indeed haunted but perhaps it's the act of sharing these narratives that keep the ghosts alive and why they endure as a tradition at Chatham University. I'm definitely a believer and I have experienced some things, you know, whether in the residence halls or um, at the gatehouse that I feel like are just too, there's, there's too much of a coincidence. Some people just don't experience paranormal things unless they're in that situation. But for me, I'm like, well, you'll, it's more like you have to see it to believe it. If somebody experiences something and they're so shaken that like they absolutely will not go back to that room, there has to have been something that happened. Um, do I know if that's a ghost or just a random occurrence? No, but I wouldn't write it completely off. Part of the reason that we don't have more documentation of the stories probably is that they were told um, student to student. They're more of a, a spoken history. If people forget or they stop sharing, like the story disappears and then you're kind of at, well, did it, 
did it ever exist if nobody remembers? Um, is it something that actually happened? Um, and I think that this is like, it's part of Chatham tradition. It's part of Chatham culture. It's one of those things that like, I really like sharing as an alum because I think that you, you kind of give it to the next generation and you're like, well, this is what I heard. Maybe you'll experience this, maybe you won't, but you know, forewarning, this could happen. And I think that that's a really interesting experience. <laughs>